it's Matt Martin with the Grass Factor. Today I wanted to do a video talking about soils and uh, the necessity of having an adequate soil to have a nice lawn. I get so many calls year in and year out, day in and day out about topsoil. I need topsoil. Um, I'll never be able to grow grass without topsoil. Uh, my soil is just too, too crappy. So what I wanted to explain is basically a series, it's not even a series, it's a way to develop your own topsoil starting from scratch. No matter how terrible it is, as long as you have actual dirt, you actually have dirt, this is a, a surefire way that works to create your own topsoil. Today, I'm going to be talking about the root cycling effect. So again, just to start off, I want to stress that as long as you have dirt, I want it to be known that never again do you have to buy topsoil. Now, let me explain to you what exactly the root cycling effect is. Okay, so... You know, say we're going to start from absolute scratch. We're going to go from seed, or this would even apply to sod. Um, we have a bare ground that we're going to go with. We, we do our preparation for however we plan to establish that. Uh, at this time, some people compost top dress. Uh, there's all sorts of, you know, people are going to cover it with, with peat moss and whatever, so on and so forth. None of that's necessary. What is necessary is to ensure seed to soil contact. That's, that's number one. Seed to soil contact. You're going to put it on a good watering program of keeping the seed wet, but not overly wet, not drowned. So, you know, you're going to be watering every four hours, four times a day, 7 11 3 7. What happens? Well, the seed begins to germinate and you get these roots that begin to establish. Now that these roots have started to establish, our goal is to drive these roots as deep as possible. So we're going to continue to uh, do whatever it is we have to do to establish those roots. I'll get into a little bit of that, but most importantly, we have to maintain adequate water. Uh, secondly, we have to have appropriate supplementation as far as nutrients are concerned. So by delivering those nutrients, we're gonna get deeper and deeper roots. Okay, so as those roots develop, some of them are going to die. Not all of your roots are going to live forever and ever. They're going to develop, they're going to die. They're going to develop, they're going to die. As those roots die, what happens is there is, you know, dead plant material that's left in the soil. What that is, is an organic matter deposit. That's an organic matter deposit. Now, what's great about organic matter? Organic matter is going to lead to an increase in microbial, act, microbial activity to break that organic matter down. It will break it down into carbon and it will break it down into usable nutrients for the plant. So by developing the roots, we're going to get organic matter deposits, which is going to increase microbial activity, which is going to increase carbon and nutrients. The more carbon and nutrients that we're having deposited back into the soil ultimately is going to help develop more root mass, more root fibers, which some are going to die, which is going to be an even greater organic matter deposit, which in turn leads to more carbon, more nutrients, more microbial activity, more root mass, more fibers, some die, more organic matter, carbon, nutrients, microbial activity, and so this is the root cycling effect. Now, the trick is, is how do you get this to happen as quickly as possible? Uh, there's, there's several different ways to go about this. And you may be saying to yourself, you know, my soil sucks. Okay, so first, first off, if you cannot get grass to germinate, uh, then the issue therein lies in your establishment or, or preparation uh, because in order to germinate, uh, it, it needs very little. That's why you can take a seed and put it in a wet paper towel and put it in the sun and it will germinate. 
So it needs very little to germinate. And if you actually have dirt, you've got an actual working, growing medium. Because even though it is just dirt, and even though it may be deficient in tons of things, it will still be a sufficient growing medium to allow for germination and the first bit of establishment. From that point, you know, this is where a soil test is going to be so critical. You can see exactly what you have, exactly what you're working with. What you can't see is what's not available. So it's important then to really begin supplementing with your N, P, and K and supplement synthetically. So that way there's not a whole lot of processes that have to take place in order for those nutrients to be available. That's where we talk about biosolids. Yes, biosolids are good to put down because you're right here. You're applying carbon and you're applying a usable nutrient source. It's very low in nutrients, but it is carbon and it is a nutrient source, which in turn leads to more root mass and more fibers. However, for this to become a usable nutrient source, for this to become a usable nutrient source, you're relying on increased microbial activity. If this is the first carbon supplementation that this soil has seen, um, it may take a long time for this increase in microbial activity. So what you're waiting for is this uh, uh, natural reaction to begin to take place. And sometimes it may take too long. So a quick, easy way to do about this, if your soil sucks, synthetic supplement with your N, P, and K. So again, biosolids are a great tool. Uh, humic acid is a great tool, but it's not the end-all, be-all. These two are not going to save you. They're not going to save your soils alone, but it is a tool in building an overall topsoil effect. And so why these work so well is that you can use the carbon in your biosolids, you can use the carbon in your humic acid to more efficiently deliver your N, P, and K. Applying N, P, and K with biosolids or with humic acid or a combination of both is going to allow that N, P, and K to be tied up and to be used by these plants as it is needed. So it's a more efficient delivery system that's going to allow for less leaching, less runoff. Now, one of the most important factors of all of this to maximize this root mass, this root fiber, you need your N, P, and K to work as efficiently as possible. Yes, applying them in conjunction with carbon is a great way to do that. However, micronutrients are the key step in order to maximize the plant's efficient use of N, P, and K. So our micronutrients are going to be things like sulfur, iron, boron, copper, molybdenum, manganese, zinc. All of those lead to more efficient use of N, P, and K in the plant. So as long as we are supplementing with micronutrients, we're going to get more efficient usage of our N, P, and K. Applying our N, P, and K in conjunction with a carbon-based supplement like a biosolid or a humic acid, this could be malorganite, this could be the RGS product, uh, applying them in conjunction with it means you're going to have a longer feed out of your N, P, and K, and then this turns into its own effect. The micronutrients lead to a more efficient delivery of the N, P, and K. The, the carbon-based supplementation will allow even the micronutrients and your macronutrients to be held into the soil for a longer period of time. Humic acid is known for increasing CECs, cation exchange capacity. That's going to be the soil's ability to retain nutrients. So in turn, what you've got is you've got your own nutrient cycling effect taking place right here. With this taking place, you're going to have a more efficient root cycling effect taking place. And so what you turn basically your lackluster soil into is a topsoil producing machine. The roots of established turf grass can deposit more organic matter than any top dressing. Uh, any sort of establishment period could faster. So... Uh, yes, you could come in and bury it in, uh, in uh, compost and till it in, and that's not very cost effective, especially if you want to get your OM levels up to where they need to be, or you need to get your carbon content up to where it needs to be. 
uh, you know, you you may be putting in uh, you know tractor trailer loads after tractor trailer loads after tractor trailer loads, and then you have to incorporate it, and that takes a very long time. Where that takes a very long time, and then you have to go through the establishment period. This does not take a very long time. This can be achieved in a season. And in fact, to get from here to this point doesn't take long at all. That could take upwards of a, of a, a couple of months. And then once this is here, this begins to take place. And this can also take place simultaneously. So then all of a sudden, within a few month period, you've begun to create your own topsoil environment. Now, that being said, in order for all of this to take place, the one basic thing that must be already established is good, solid cultural practices. Cultural practices are going to be watering habits, mowing habits, mowing heights, uh, you know, not mowing when the yard is drought stressed, not letting the yard be buried under leaves for extended periods of time, not flooding your yard with, with uh, irrigation just because it's actually, you, you know, Doing these cultural practices, making sure the, that you aerate every year. Um, without these in place, none of this can take place as efficiently as it should. So again, this is just one more step in building your own perfect soil. I really feel like these people that preach topsoil and whatnot are, uh, I don't want to say wrong, um, and I don't want to say they're running a scam, but it's just not necessary. It's inefficient and, um, frankly, it's expensive. I don't see the need to, uh, excavate out and then resell topsoil, truck it, move it everywhere when you can start with actually what you have and turn it into topsoil. So, Anyway, y'all, that's going to be the video today. That's my secret to making your own topsoil at your house, no matter how poor, crappy your soil is. So I hope y'all enjoy this. It's back to being, it's good to be back in front of the whiteboard. Uh, if y'all don't mind, please do me a favor. Click the subscribe button. It lets me know to keep going. Don't hesitate to comment in the comments down below. I read each and every one of them. Send me an email at thegrassfactor at gmail.com. And if you haven't made plans to the, go to the GIE, do so and come hang out with me. I'll be at the Permagreen booth. I'll be there all days of the GIE. And uh, I'd love to meet as many people as possible. So, all right, y'all. Thanks so much. Have a good one.